Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Highway to Hell, and it's been a long time since we've done one of these, and pretty much I ended the show, kind of, because the current Ghost Rider comic book was canceled. But now we got two books to talk about that actually deal with the current Ghost Rider storylines. Uh, one of them is called Ghost Rider The Return of Vengeance, and it's also the return of Howard Mackey and uh, Javier Saltares uh, back to the universe of Ghost Rider, which is really cool. And then we also have a new King in Black tie-in that we're going to talk about in the second half of the episode, which is called King in Black Ghost Rider. And it's a one-shot that kind of wraps up Ed Breeson's run a little bit. And in a very meta way, too, actually. So we'll get into that here in a second. But what I want to start with is the Return of Vengeance comic book. Because this one I thought was really neat. When they announced it, I was like, hey, Howard Mackey's coming back. He's going to get to write the character that he kind of co-created and, and worked on, uh, which is the character of Vengeance, uh, Michael Badalino. And, uh, and this character first, I think he appeared in a, a couple different books. I think Spirits of Vengeance was one of them, um, you know, in the 90s in the Ghost Rider series. And he was, has this background where uh, Johnny Blaze was tricked by Mephisto to like shoot Michael's father with Hellfire, which drove his father insane and kind of ended up in a roundabout way ruining Michael's life. So he's always wanted to get revenge on Ghost Rider, but then he found out that Johnny Blaze was tricked and that Mephisto's been behind all this. And so he turned against Mephisto and joined the Midnight Suns and helped fight against evil in the, you know, in the 90s with the Ghost Rider and everything. He even became the new Ghost Rider for a very short period of time. Uh, and he took over the um, uh, Marvel Comics Presents comic book, which was primarily, uh, in the beginning, featured a lot of Wolverine and stuff, but then eventually featured Wolverine on one side and Ghost Rider on the other, with two other characters, you know, coming and going. But then Vengeance took over that title as well. So, uh, so yeah, very cool character always wondered what happened to him and uh, and here we see that he was sucked right back down to hell so the book opens up with him in hell being tortured by specific demons who just you know love torturing their jobs in hell are to torture and michael's being tortured by these demons and so as the story progresses uh he runs into anton hellgate who is someone that was an enemy of his up on earth uh but so was skinner and skinner was another character i think uh, that um howard mackey might have created during his Ghost Rider run and so Skinner's down here too. So you have Anton Hellgate and Skinner locked up in a cell. And then you have Michael here being tortured and his life is being kind of, you know, uh, flashing back to his life on Earth. And he's being uh, retold his, you know, origins essentially by this demon that's torturing him. And that's mainly just for new readers, people who don't know who Vengeance is. Um, but, uh, but it was clear to me in this because the way Vengeance comes back, it's really like haphazard and, and just kind of thrown together. Uh, basically, Skinner gets released from his cell because he's a former enemy of, of Vengeance's, obviously. So they're like, okay, we're torturing you, but we're going to let out Skinner and he's going to like fight you and, and possibly kill you. And so the two of them, you know, get into a battle and then Skinner says, hey, uh, let's get out of here together. And, you know, of course, Michael's like, what? He's like, you're my enemy and I have to kill you and this is part of my torture. And Skinner's like, no, I've been keeping a bone. So Skinner has some bones sticking out of him. He pulls one off his shoulder and he's like, this is actually one of Ghost Rider's bones and it's infused with Hellfire. I've been keeping it uh, all these years as a, a souvenir and as like additional pain. You know, it's been burning me underneath my skin. He goes, but, uh, but you know, I guess for his punishments, him trying to atone in some way. But he's like, uh, but I can, I'm taking it out now and I'll give it to you. If you touch this, the leftover Hellfire, uh, you know, a spirit of vengeance that's inside of you, it might reactivate. So obviously none of that makes any damn sense at all. Um, it's very convenient and just thrown together. And I think that's just because Howard Mackey was probably given very one very specific uh, incentive here, which was, hey, your only goal with this book, like we want to bring you back. You're going to write a vengeance one shot. We literally just want you to bring vengeance back to earth. That's it. We don't care how you do it. We just, at the end of the book, vengeance needs to be back on earth because we might use them in a future Ed Breeson story. That's what I'm thinking his incentive was. So I don't think he really worried about all the details. So once, you know, Vengeance or Michael grabs that bone, he turns back into Vengeance. Uh, so uh, so then after that, he, him and Skinner kill all the demons that were torturing Michael. And then they, he picks up all their bones and builds a motorcycle out of their bones. <laughs> so uh, pretty cool stuff, but just very fun and kind of thrown together. So by page eight, you know, or whatever, he's already Vengeance again. And their mission is, okay, we got to get out of hell. So him, Skinner, and Hellgate all team up and they work their way through all these different demons trying to get through to the to this certain spot in hell where they think they can open a gateway to get back to Earth. And uh, and when they get there, they realize, like, they're all sitting around and Hellgate and Skinner are like, wait, so what's the plan here? And Vengeance is like, well, we need something to open up a portal to Earth. 
And they're like, okay, but what could do it? And then Vengeance looks like at Hellgate. He looks over at him and goes, I'm talking about you, kid. And, and you know, Hellgate's like, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, my name's Hellgate and I can open dimensions to hell, but this isn't exactly going to work. And Vengeance's like, I'm going to make it work. So Vengeance pins him to this stone wall that has like this uh, inscription on it. And he casts this spell and basically like, we need to cut you open and uh, and sacrifice you basically so you're gonna basically you're gonna die even though you're gonna stay in hell but we got to cut you in half so that this gateway opens so we can get back to earth um so that's pretty much what the whole book is it's literally just vengeance and skinner teaming up together to do this so once they so hellgate's like wait i've just been used this whole time and Vengeance's like yeah but you're one of my enemies anyway so i don't care <laughs> like I'm, I'm okay with sacrificing you so he does that and then him and skinner get on the motorcycle and drive through the portal and head to earth but as they're passing through, you know, the, the realms going back to Earth, uh, they start seeing these um, images. Michael's memories and, and Skinner's memories were blurring together. And so he saw, like, he saw Skinner's life. And he saw that Skinner actually killed his own wife and kid. Um, and, and, of course, Skinner tries to rationalize. He's like, look, I'm working for Satan. Mephisto was going to kill them anyway. So I thought I should kill them uh, to free them, you know, from that you know, from being taken from me in that way. Um, like I wanted them to leave on my terms or whatever, which is really sick also. Um, so, so Vengeance says, I don't care what your reason was. You physically killed your kid, you, your kid and your wife. So um, I, I, now I've seen your life and I've kind of lived your life as we pass through the, you know, the portal together to come back to earth. So when Michael sees that, he's like, well, I'm the spirit of vengeance and uh, your sins are not going to go unpunished. So Vengeance in the end kills Skinner and, uh, and and sends his soul back to hell. So all that work they did to get out. And that one ticket that Skinner had was that bone to use uh, to give Vengeance power back so they could get back to Earth and use the portal of Hellgate. That probably won't ever work again. <laughs> so, so now you have Skinner being sent back to hell and you have uh, Vengeance now loose on Earth. So that's, again, that's the end of the book. It's not really a lot to it. Um, again, written by Howard Mackey and Javier Sotaris does some of the artwork for the first 10 pages and then Mark Deering does the uh, pages for 11 through 25. So it's just like a one-shot book. Like I said, 25 pages, that's it. Um, I wish there was a little bit more. I wish this was like a 40-page book and there was more story to it and a little bit more of the buildup and everything like that. But it gets to the point, so you can't really be too mad about it. And it's kind of silly. Like uh, some of this book is just like very just like haphazard, like, oh, he's got a bone on him. Okay. And then we're going to use that and he's going to open the hell gate. And then, you know, so it's just kind of like all these coincidences really, but it's fine. I mean, it, it was just cool to see Howard Mackey back on a book. And even though I have my critiques of it overall, like I said, I feel like his, his mandate was just, Hey, we want you to come back. All we need you to do is get vengeance from hell to earth so we can tell more stories with them. So I hope they do. I don't know what plans they have for this character. Um, I think they had more plans for him before all this uh, happened with COVID and before the book got canceled and everything. Uh, I'm sure there was more plans for him at that point. But, you know, uh, unfortunately, he's not, it doesn't seem like he's in the cards for any future stories. And the reason I say that is because of the next book. Um, but yeah, please go buy this Return of Vengeance book. It's really neat. And it's got um, like a cool gallery in the back, like with uh, like a bunch of different art and sketches and stuff of Vengeance and different designs for him and Skinner and everything like that from Javier and um, and, and uh, Deering, the other artist on it. So just a cool thing. It's it's a nice book. I think it's like $4.99. I think that's a little too pricey for it. Um, I think it's $4.99. Maybe it's $3.99. If it is, buy it. If it's $4.99, I don't know. I mean, I guess still buy it if you're a collector like I am. Uh, nothing will probably stop you. But um, but yeah, it was just, it was okay. It was fine. Uh, it, it did its job. It got vengeance back to earth. But unfortunately, we're not probably going to get any vengeance stories for a while. And that's a real shame. And the reason, like I said, I say that is because we cut now to King and Black Ghost Rider, which just came out, I think today, actually. And um, this is written by Ed Breeson and Juan Frigeri does the artwork. Uh, so, you know, same teams that were working on the main book uh, when that was, uh, you know, first came out. Um, there was an, an, an other artist on it, too, but Juan was one of the artists. So I love seeing Juan's art. His his art style is so amazing. Um, but what this is, is it's Ghost Rider arriving in New York City. He's still dragging Mephisto around. And that's when he sees the King in Black event going on. And he's like, what the hell are these things? And he sees a dragon flying overhead. And he's like, okay. He's like, well, we got to go deal with this, right? And Mephisto's like, yeah, I mean, if you don't go fight these things, you know, millions of people could die. That's a lot of innocent souls, or some of them anyway. And so uh, he's like, okay. So Ghost Rider gets on his bike. He has Mephisto chained up. And while Mephisto's chained, 
Ghost Rider goes into battle and, <laughs> and fights these dragons. Um, and then he even lights one on fire with Hellfire, which is so... If we go back to that uh, Venom story where Venom and Ghost Rider met in the sewers, um, Spirits of Venom, I think the story was called, in that storyline with Spider-Man, the pen and stare did not work on Venom, and the Hellfire didn't exactly burn Venom either. And I think later when Venom met Vengeance, I think the same thing. I think Hellfire, it hurt, but it didn't hurt like, I guess, regular fire did or something. It didn't seem like that big of a deal to Venom, and I always thought that was interesting. But I knew the pen and stare didn't work. Well, in here, we have now Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze, has the damnation stare. So it's not even the penance stare anymore. He has a more powerful stare now that he's like the new devil or whatever. So he tries to use that on the dragon, and it hurts the dragon, but it doesn't kill it. And the Hellfire doesn't really do much damage either. So Ghost Rider is not as uh, you know effective as he would like to be in this situation. So he's trying to help. He's cutting the head of the dragon off and all this stuff. but uh, Or he's trying to, but he finds out that the head, when it gets cut off... He looks over and he sees his brother, Danny. So Danny is now the Death Rider. He's like a new you know, character from Limbo. Um, and he comes up with the name Death Rider. And Ghost Rider's like, wait, really? Death Rider? That's your name? He's like, what do you want? He's like, I'm trying to keep the theme going here. He's like, I didn't want to be named after the guy who used to have this power, which was like the spirit of uh, uh, whatever it was. <laughs> uh, so, so he was the spirit of something else. And he's like, yeah, I didn't want to use any of those names. I'm going to be Death Rider now. And he has Caretaker with him. And they have Blackheart with them. Because if you remember in the last time we saw, Blackheart had um, uh, Danny's uh, ex-wife and his bartender friend. He had them under his possession. Blackheart did. And he says, look, you're going to help me return my father to the throne um, before Lilith gets the throne. Or I'm going to like hurt your two friends here. So this is what Ed Breeson is doing. He's basically wrapping up his run. I wasn't expecting that in this. Honestly, I, I knew he would probably wrap a few things up. But this is literally him wrapping up his Ghost Rider run in a lot of ways. And even to where he has a meta, like a very meta line at the end uh, that we'll get to here in a second. But um, but he, it's very much him making it very clear. Hey, look, I don't think I'm going to get to write these characters again. I'm lucky enough to get this one shot. So I'm going to try to wrap up as much as I can in this one shot. So it does feel a little forced, some of the events that happen in this book. But it does have a nice flow to it. And, and I can tell. I can tell that this is it, that he's just writing this to kind of wrap things up and put Mephisto in a position. So again, just like, uh, you know, Howard Mackey got the told a few months ago or, or a year ago, probably when he wrote uh, the Vengeance book, uh, back when they had bigger plans for Vengeance, his goal was, hey, just get Vengeance on Earth. It seemed like Ed Breeson was given the task, hey, just put Mephisto back in the, the, the seat of King of Hell. And that's what Ed Breeson had to do. So he had to wrap up his run and do that and untie all these loose ends up and stuff too. So uh, it's a little bit of a shame, but it's still a pretty good read. And so, you know, when Ghost Rider sees Blackheart, he gets mad and he grabs him, chains him up. And, and Danny's like, don't don't hurt him. We need him. He's got, you know, my ex-wife and my bartender friend, you know, under his control. So we need to just do what he wants, which is he wants us to return his father to the throne. We got to do it because honestly, Johnny, you're not doing a very good job being the king of hell anyway. Um, the power is corrupting you. You're having trouble fighting it. Uh, we've, you know, tempered you down a little bit, but the, the anger and rage keeps coming back. Like you're not cut out for this. Like you thought you were going to do a good job and you're, you're not doing a good job. So we just, it's better the devil, you know, and we just need to put Mephisto back in there. Cause if Lilith takes over, we're all screwed. Like she's going to do way worse than Mephisto does. And he already does bad enough, but we need him back into hell. So now that I've read this, now I'm thinking that Nick Spencer book makes a little bit more sense. Because if you remember, Nick Spencer in his uh, recent issue of issue 60 of Spider-Man, uh, Doctor Strange goes and talks to Mephisto, who's just freely roaming around. He's not chained up anywhere. Now that makes a lot more sense reading this, uh, you know, now that this finally came out. So maybe Nick Spencer knew the plan was to return Mephisto back to his throne. So that makes a lot more sense because I was trying to figure out where in the timeline that happened it would make sense that that issue takes place after King and Black. Um, so you have Danny here trying to talk to, you know, Johnny, telling him, like, look, we got to do this. This is this is the plan. So they all march through um, New York because they look over where Ghost Rider chained Mephisto up and Mephisto got loose. So he's running through the streets and all these demons are coming out that are working for Lilith and they're trying to take Mephisto down. And then uh, that's when all of them get hit by symbiote. So that dragon that they cut its head off, the sim it, it broke apart like it does in the other books, and it went and infected all the demons. So now you have symbiote-infested demons who are going to kill Mephisto, 
But that's when Danny shows up as the Death Rider, Caretaker, Blackheart, and Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze, all show up and take down the demons. And then finally, um, Johnny gets enough energy to do the damnation stare because he tries to do it once and the symbiotes wrap around his face and cover his eyes but then he cuts through them and so does you know danny and everyone and uh, and as johnny like gets his eyes free he does a penance stare into one of the symbiotes and they all have a hive mind so they sh all share the pain which i wonder i'm like does that mean null felt that effect they don't really show it but all these symbiotes in this area though they do feel the effect so they'll get weakened and then they get killed by the Ghost Riders and the team and everything. So then the book ends with uh, Mephisto looking down into a pit of hell. And uh, Blackheart has opened a gate to bring Mephisto back to hell. And Ghost Rider grabs him with chains and pulls him. He's like, no, we can't do this. And Caretaker and Danny are like, look, we've already been through this, Johnny. We have to. Let him go. Let him go back down to hell. It's the only thing. Like, we have this. We saw the future. We saw all these things that are going to happen. And we know what is coming down the line. At least this gives us a little bit of an upper hand because this wasn't supposed to happen this way. It wasn't supposed to happen in the in this kind of battle. Like we didn't foresee all this stuff in our visions. So you letting Mephisto go back now is different than our vision. So maybe it'll give us some kind of upper hand or change the outcome in some way. So that's kind of Breeson, I think, trying to like, you know, say like, ah, I gotta wrap my stuff up early, but you know, at least um at least it's getting wrapped up and, and we get to do it you know, this way. And it's, it, we are acknowledging that it goes against the plans I was setting up, but now it, it leaves the future untold. And so writers can go and write this, you know, whatever they want to do with these characters. But what I like is there's literally a moment in here. There's a line where Ghost Rider says like, I know this is not the ending you wanted, Johnny. Like da uh, Danny says that to Johnny. He's like, I know this isn't the ending you wanted. And maybe it's not the ending we deserved, but it does help set the path for the future uh, and keeping it a little unknown. And right now we could use a little unknown because when things are written in stone, like, you know, that the world's going to end, you know, that's scarier. You know, that's a, that's that's harder to beat. But if the world is on, if the future is unknown now, we can beat whatever is coming. We have a chance at least. So I kind of like that that was Breeson in the meta way saying, I know this is not the ending you wanted everybody reading this, but leaving the future unknown could be a good thing. And I, I like that. I like that he was kind of addressing us while also having Danny address Johnny that way. Um, so that was cool. And then it does an epilogue where you go back to the fadeaway bar and you see the, you know, Danny's ex-wife and, and the bartender lady waking up uh, from, from you know, being, put, you know, under, put under by Blackheart. So now they're free. And, uh, and Danny's ex-wife's like, let me tell you something, lady, like, you know, to the bartender. She's like, I know you work here, but do yourself a favor. Go work in any other bar because Danny is not worth the trouble. So you're kind of ending on a note where Danny's ex is not a fan of him and that the bartender might leave. Uh, and then it has another epilogue where you go back down to hell and you have Mephisto uh, working with uh, his son Blackheart and they're actually united for the first time in a long time. And Blackheart actually is holding something. He has a little hellfire bird cage and inside of it is a sliver of a symbiote, just a little ball. And Mephisto says, you know what? Just keep it, put it in one of our trophy rooms keep it around you never know when a symbiote of our own is going to come in handy and maybe we'll nurture it and raise it in hell and and breed something unique so i thought that was kind of cool because then that means mephisto has you know a symbiote uh, you know that he can control and i'm kind of into that idea because um the symbiotes are seemingly very powerful against demons they can they can possess demons uh which is neat because demons are usually the ones who do the possessing uh, the penance stare doesn't really uh, work on uh, symbiotes, so that makes them stronger than demons in some way, and spirits of vengeances. And then hellfire doesn't always burn through them. So I just kind of thought that was cool. Like, I was like, all right, so he's got his own symbiote now. Um, so that's kind of the other epilogue at the end of this, and then it ends with Mephisto sitting back on his throne, which is really cool. And he says, uh, you know, it's good to be home. <laughs> so, uh, so there you go. So again, it just seems like these two writers, uh, you know, were both given uh, an incentive or were both given a goal or a task, which is, hey, Howard Mackey, get vengeance back on Earth. And then that book came out a couple months ago, I think it did, uh, the vengeance one. And then now with this story, they're like, Ed Breeson, you're going to get to come back and do a, a one-shot ghostwriter book. Doesn't really tie a ton into King and Black, which is why I, I didn't make it a King and Black Venom vlog episode. I'm doing it here on, uh, you know, uh, Highway to Hell uh, because it, it was good to do another Highway to Hell episode and we had vengeance to talk about anyway. But I liked putting these two books together because I felt like they were both writers were probably approached with the same goal. Get vengeance to Earth, get Mephisto back to Hell. 
And that's what they did. And both writers, I think, successfully did that and still told fun stories along the way. And I like that Breeson at least threw a, a little nod to us fans going, hey, look, I know you guys, I promised you a much bigger story and something bigger and more clim you know, climactic. This feels a little anticlimactic. I, I, I get it. But maybe there's some good in this, too, uh, by us putting Mephisto back in his role. Maybe that'll allow other writers to tell unique stories that I now no longer get to tell. And I kind of like that mentality that he he did that so i'm digging it i thought these were two good books um you know overall and I, I hope you guys enjoyed them too if you haven't read them please go out and pick them up vengeance i don't know if you'll find a copy now i couldn't find a physical copy of that book when it came out um it kind of flew under my radar so i forgot to put it on my pull list so i bought that one digitally uh but this one um i i had to go get the physical copy i was like i gotta check this book out it's just it, it's ghost rider it's got danny in it I gotta check it out. So I'm glad I did. Uh, the Vengeance one didn't have Danny in it, so I'm, as far as a Danny uh, catch completionist, I don't need to own a physical copy of that book. But this one I did, so I'm glad I got it. Um, but I just want to hear your thoughts. If you read them, if you haven't, whatever, let me know down below. But if you haven't, please, you know, go check out these books if you can. If you can get them in your area, if you can buy them digitally, please do it. Support these books because the only way we can get more Ghostwriter stuff with Ed Breeson is if the book sells well. So I really want these books to sell really well. I'd love to see Howard Mackey come back and do a follow-up on the Vengeance story now that Vengeance on Earth. And I'd also like to see Ed Breeson come back and do a follow-up to this. Even if he's not writing the big Mephisto story that Marvel's building up to, I'd still like to see Ed Breeson come in and do more stuff with Danny and Johnny at some point. And hopefully he will get that chance. Uh, hopefully. I would re really like that. So, but all the pieces are in place. So we still, there is other writers can now tell Johnny stories where he's back on Earth as Ghost Rider. And you have Danny as the Death Rider. You have Caretaker. So you have those characters set up and you have Vengeance out there. So it would be cool to see a new Midnight Suns book with all of them coming together. I would love that. And I would love Ed Breeson to be the writer of that book. So let me know what you think down below. And we'll continue the conversation as always down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in hell. Peace.